Welcome to Monday Night Football, where Soccer Town USA comes to you. And you are getting smooth at that. You know, and, and just a little uh, PSA golf is dope. If you haven't played it, go play some golf. Yeah, Juan's going to be starting a golf show uh, as soon as this uh, goes off air. We are. <laughs> hey, but Todd, we had a week. Yep. We've got some standings. We had some uh, near losses, comeback cats. Comeback cats, were, that's becoming a thing, man. Comeback cats, they were on the wire, came down to the last minute, they were hanging by the ropes, but, you know. That's two, uh, that's two weeks in a row, man. That's two good character for row. them. Yes. Uh, so before we get too far, once again, a big shout out uh, to uh, Kenny Rangel, uh, who um, hopefully, Kenny, uh, you're, you're about out of uh, surgery right now when this is going live, so uh, wish you a speedy <clears> recovery. <throat> and for those of you that know Kenny, please reach out to him, uh, give him some words of encouragement. And uh, but moving on uh, to uh, soccer, let's go to that Opulink scoreboard. Opulink let's scoreboard. dig right in. All right, boys side, we had the comeback. Uh, Dalton over Pebble Book three two with scoring in the last two minutes of the game for the game winner. Uh, North Murray over Ridgeland four to one. Cahala Creek uh, blanking Ringo three zero. Southeast blanking uh, Snoresville five zero. Uh, Northwest putting eleven on Central Carrollton uh, to one. Now you you at there is a discrepancy because. Southeast played Central. Yep. Uh, and it was a 1-0 game. Dawn Academy with an 8-1 win over Coosa. Murray County losing 3-1 to Fannin. Christian Heritage uh, beating Bowden 7-0. Uh, there's the score. Southeast 1-0 over Central Carrollton. And Northwest over Heritage 5-2. That was a comeback by Northwest because they yes, fell down earlier in early. that game. And then Northwest losing to Baylor 5-2. They It was 3-2 there in the second half a little bit, and I think it just got away from them. Dawn Academy. <laughs> They're just rolling right now. 4-0 over North Murray. Murray County 10-0 over Harrelson County. And then Dalton 7-0 over Hiram. All right, on the girls' side, Dalton loses out to Lambert 2 nothing. Cahulla Creek uh, drops 7 on Ringgold. Southeast 3 over Sonorville. Uh, Dalton Academy uh, loses out 9-0 to Coosa. Murray County loses lose by 1 to Fannin. Christian Heritage uh, big over Bowden. Southeast uh, is that right? Is no, that Southeast right? should it's be hard eight. to say. Yeah. Southeast girls, eight. And Central Carrollton, one. They win that one. Northwest, one over Heritage. Actually, that game it was 4-0. Yep. And uh, Murray County, 4-3 over Harrelson. Good win for Murray. Dalton, 8-0 over Hiram. North Murray uh, ties up Ridgeland. And I bet there was a winner out of that because that was a region game. Do you happen to know? I did not look on Max Preps uh, to see who won it. So, and it. also, you know, uh, last week, Cahulla Creek should have played Bremen. Uh, and that was going to basically that's going to be the game that decides region on that boys side. It was called with 26 minutes in the first half due to power outage with Bremen up uh, 1-0. They do have one common opponent so far this season. That was Ringgold. Both of them beat Ringgold 3-0. So they're replaying that game? because. Today, right? They are replaying that game, so uh, probably by the time this goes live, that game will be well underway, and uh, hopefully uh, the Creek boys can pull it out because uh, I know. But that's going to be a that's going to be a tough game. Yeah, we had some uh, really quick. I mean, before we go to the, uh, bring on our special guest, we had a couple of region champs crowned last week, both in 4A. Yeah. Uh, for the boys, uh, Northwest and Southeast, I know uh, we have a region championship game being played this week. Uh, Dalton Bo girls versus Cartersville. They're both 4-0, so the winner of that one will take the region championship. Uh, big game, Calhoun playing in Dalton. Uh, right now they're, uh, no, Cass. Calhoun, Cass, I know we don't, but they're, Cass is undefeated, but they got to play Calhoun. If they lose, it's a three-way tie at 4-1, and, one, and yeah. I don't want to figure out that. But we're going to go to commercial break. When we come back, we got a special guest, one of Todd's favorite soccer players, uh, Leslie Alanis. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? And what would it be like? Open up a world of possibilities when you sell your home and make those dreams real. At coldwellbanker.com, you can get an instant estimate on your home, compare cost of living city by city, and learn more about our revolutionary seller's assurance program. So it really is true. Your dreams don't have to be just dreams. At coldwellbanker.com. Who's up for some football? That's not football, this is football. And Andy, there's one thing that we all can agree on. That's it, North Georgia is the home for new and pre-owned vehicles. And don't forget accessories, parts, service, and collision needs. 
¡Claro que, que sí, sí se puede! ¡Gracias! ¡Hey! ¡It's our part! Why should you choose OptiLink Internet? I chose OptiLink because of the great local service. We know computers and OptiLink knows Internet with high-speed symmetrical uploads and downloads. My customers depend on me for safety and security, and I need fast and dependable Internet. That's why I chose OptiLink. Some people say you can't have fast Internet. I say, oh, yes, you can with OptiLink. Experience the difference. Call today, 706-529-1313. I'm Waylon. I live in Dalton, and I'm the owner of Elite Lineman Training Institute. And I'm Mitch Sanford with Bitwell Bank. When I left Georgia Power to start my own business, I met with Mitch and told him what we were doing. I told Waylon, you're the kind of business we want to work with. We have a very high standard for how we work as a company and especially how we treat our clients. After a very candid conversation with Mitch, we knew we were on the same page. Today, we're working on several businesses, training and real estate. Because they do the heavy lifting, so I can focus on my business, my bank is built well. And that was my first introduction to our next guest, Leslie Alanis. Leslie, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, I'm sure you remember that goal quite well. Uh, and uh, so that was the goal against Dalton last year. And uh, Juan and I were standing behind the goal when that went in. We heard it ping off the post yeah. and go in. Uh, but to me, the standout moment was not so much the goal, but the celebration afterward. And, you know, well, I don't know about you, but at this level, I don't see that kind of uh, banter at the girls' level. Not on the girls' level, no. The guys' level, you see it. They, you know, uh, Southeast got a lot of, uh, they got a lot of things Dalton boys do. So, I mean, that, but for the girls, they usually score and it's kind of subdued. But yeah. Leslie just scores. So she ran to the sideline. I think she jumped up in the air and did like the almost like Cristiano Ronaldo <laughs> swoop, but yeah. also with the let, little. Let me hear, let me hear you that. So has that always been a part of your game, like you know that kind of edge to it? Well, like I tell the girls, you, this ain't gonna happen all the time, so you gotta celebrate it, you know, because you never know when your last game is gonna be. Oh yeah, yeah. And especially yeah. in big rivalry games, yes. right? Yeah. It's such a huge moment. Like, yeah. like you mean you may hit a, you may never hit a, a shot like that versus in that moment. Mm -hmm. So, but how, we called that goal. You know, we were in the back of the goal, and we said this is going to go in. Yeah, I knew. I just knew it was going to be on frame. I could just tell, but I didn't expect it to ping off the post the way it did. Just but hold nice on. Before we go any further, people are going to ask, "What is this in front of us?" So, uh, well, this is in honor of our ex-co-host Roy Alvaron, who's uh, yeah. watching and sent him a text of this already. He already sent me a laughing emoji, and he said I, I had one bad pick. But Roy, the bad pick was. You know, Roy, when he was on the show, he liked to say, hey, what's the weather like? It looks like Dalton's going to score 10. You know, he'd always like to put those predictions out there. And, and when Dalton Southeast girls were going to play the first time, I think Roy predicted, hey, the weather's like, it looks like it's going to be a 10 nil or something like that. Yeah, it was something ridiculous. It, it, ran, it rubbed some people the wrong way. I think Leslie took it to the heart. And next thing we know, when we see her at uh, El Clasico at Dalton High Stadium, the final of the year, she's wearing this shirt. And we had to have her bring it out here. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for bringing that. And my favorite part's at the end, bud. Bud. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's talk about you a little more uh, since you're here. So how old were you when you started playing? Like six years old. Six years old. And yeah. so was that just like in the backyard, or were you just right into rec leagues, or what did um, that look like? Well, my brother played, and there weren't no girls out here playing. So I grew up playing with my brother. And then from there, I went to church league, and then somehow I started playing with my mom. So you were in all, like, boys' leagues up yeah. until you were how old? Um, like 10 years old, probably. So okay. Do you think that gave you a competitive edge when you were playing the girls or gave you that? Because the way you play, you play aggressive, you play strong, but you play, like, nothing can get you off. Do you think you attribute that to playing with the boys growing up? Yeah, because it's, it's different. Like, they won't, like, I don't know. It's just really different. Yeah, the boys won't take it easy. Yeah, they won't. Yeah. And especially on a girl, they're not going to take it easy. So how did you end up playing in a league with your mom? Well, um, I remember um, playing indoor with them, too. And that kind of helped me, too. Was this indoor. down in Calicos? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then there was an outdoor league. So um, the guy 
he wanted me to play because he thought I was good. So, I mean, I was nervous because I was young, and then there were the moms. And I gave it a shot, and it helped me. Okay, so when did you start playing, like, uh, I guess, organized rec league or club ball? Uh, like, did you play club? Yes, I played for the Bells. So how old were you when you started that? Like, fifth grade, fourth grade. Oh, yeah. young. Okay, okay. So you must, you must have, uh, John must have spotted talent at a young <laughs> age then. So how did it feel? Because you're playing with the Bells. Let's just put it out. You're playing with the Bells pretty much year-round, correct? Yes. And then you're only playing with your <clears throat> teammates at Southeast probably just for three or four months. So when you go to play at Dalton and you go to play at Heritage, you see the girl that you play with that you're probably going to have a game with that weekend. Yeah. How, what's the feeling? What's the mindset going into that? Like, I mean, just I've always been curious. Like, do you say, like, well, I'm going to go in hard or wait? Yeah. No, we got a big game. I maybe don't need to tackle that hard because I don't need to get hurt. What is the mindset? Or does the coach even, Coach Bolger, even say anything to you? All like, hey, we know you're going to play each other. Maybe take it a little easy. What is the mindset like that? Well, I remember him telling us, like, at the end of the day, you are teammates. Mm -hmm. But whatever happens, happens, you know. But you got to go out there and play your game. Okay. Yeah. So you didn't take it easy on anybody then? Oh, no. I just played my game. All right. I think that's, I think that's key is, like, you got to go out there and you got to, like, be yourself in a game, right? You can't – because I think when you start trying to adapt how you play versus, you know, your relationship with the person across, I think that gets you out of your game and, like, the way you're comfortable playing, right? Yeah. And you're not the best version of yourself. And Boulder, I'm sure, knows that. Um, so who, when you were little, like, who were the players you looked up to? My uncle, I looked up to him a lot. Um, he has helped me um, get ready for my college season and high school season. He's the one that pushes me every day. Who's your uncle? Give him a shout out. Miguel Alanis. Okay. Yeah, that's my uncle. Does he play here locally somewhere? Uh, no, he used to play, but I think he tore something in his knee. Who did he play with back in the day? Oh, just like the reg league and stuff oh, okay. like that. Oh, okay. never played like in the Mexican leagues or anything? No. Oh, okay. Uh, that's good that you had someone there pushing you. I mean, that's something that we need now. Uh, obviously, someone said, hey, look, you have the potential, but this is the work you're going to have to. And it looks like he recognized that at a young age for you, and it looks like you took it to heart and it's helped you get into where you're at now. Yeah. So contrast that to, like, the player. Let, let me switch it up a little bit from who you look up to now as a player. Who do you try to emulate your game after? Free her title. Oh, they! Wow, I did, man. Nope. Shout out. Okay, and so why is that? And so, for the, well, for for those who don't know, Brie Hurtado, she's still at Southeast, right? Man in the back line. Is that the Brie Hurtado? No, no, Brie Hurtado at Dalton State. Oh, yeah. gosh, gotcha, so gotcha. they graduated the yes. year before you. So, what's special about her game that you you like to emulate it? Just the way she plays. Like, no matter. I feel like I can go to her no matter what. She, I, I told you I played defense. They put mm -hmm. me as defense. I was nervous. She just gave me a talk, and it just helped me a lot more. So she's a motivator, both, yeah. like, on the field, you trust her, but also, like, as for, like, the mental part of the game. Yes. And, it was, and that's good mentorship. So think about it. Someone coming in as a freshman, and she's over here, instead of trying to, you know, maybe not be as friendly, she's like, no, your teammate, this one needs to go on. Uh, this is what you need to do and give her a little pep talk. We're going to go to commercial break. When we come back, we're going to have more Leslie Alanis. We provide an excellent service for individuals who've had catastrophic injury cases. People who've had injuries that are gonna last them, unfortunately, for the rest of their life. Being there for a person, being there to actually see them get better, that is what this field is all about. That's what we're really striving to do, and that's what we think we provide. You still have to have that empathy for the person so you can tell their story to the jury. At the end of the day, that's where your case is heard. Has a recent storm damaged the roof of your home? Altman Roofing has been restoring homes since 1984. In Dalton alone, over 2,000 roofs have been replaced by Altman. Altman Roofing will also work with your insurance claim. 
For a free 15-minute estimate for roofing, siding, or gutters, call 706-529-8136 or visit altmanroofing.com. You can also see their professional work on Facebook. Thank you. Thank you, North Georgia. Gracias, North Georgia. We appreciate you, North Georgia. I'm Seymour. I'm John Moore. Like the Georgia Bulldogs, we're number one. Thank you, North Georgia, for voting us number one six years in a row. If you're hurt and want the best, give us a call. We'll do the rest. And welcome back to Monday Night Football. As we mentioned, we have Leslie Al Alanis here with us, the lady that came out with a beautiful shirt that says, Roy Alvaron, check the weather, bud. I mean, that went hey, viral. Roy Alvaron still, like, not been here since season one, still getting talked about. Just, you know what, Roy, just a testament to, like, you know, your personality. We miss no, you. No, the thing now. is, people out there still ask about Roy. Yes. I know Russell Vick he loves was a, He Roy. was a Russell lovely. Vick, the no, South Roy, Roy Alvaron, number one fan. Number one fan. And <laughs> Russell, I know if you're watching this, you're going to, he's probably over there, like, what are they talking about? But. You know, we that's know. the number one We thing. know. But let's get back to these questions with Leslie. All right. Leslie, looking back uh, on your high school career, what do you think was the biggest moment? My junior, uh, when we made it, Pat, when we went to Elite Eight. The Elite Eight? Yeah. So where did you guys finish in region that year? Did you win region? No, I think we finished second or third. So you made it to Elite Eight and still had to take the number two seeds. That means you had to yeah. go on the road. Uh, play some tough teams. Yeah, yeah, I, I can so see. So, what that. would you be? So, what was the most disappointing? When we lost to Sonorville. Oh, last, last year. Yeah. So, when you see that score line this year, and you see that your your teammates that are that are still there, and they kind of avenge that loss, does that make you feel good? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, and also, like last year, you know, I feel uh, you know it was a tell of two halves, right, Todd? Yeah. You guys started out super strong. We're like eight and one, or eight, like y'all were like eight, nine, one, and then y'all just hit a tailspin. You, I mean, you you graduated now. I mean, what do you think caused the tailspin? What was it like? How did, what was, was it just it? a confidence issue after after you guys lost the Northwest game? Yes. Wow. I guess it got too much in our heads, and we went down from there. Yeah, and contrast that this year, right? They, they lost, lost the game. Now they've bounced back with yeah. two convincing wins, and we talked about it. And, and uh, you know, I saw you at the game, and, and you had some of the, the team out there, and it's like, you know, hey, you guys can't dwell on this. There's still an entire season to play. There's still seeding to play yeah. for. And, and now they're, you know, they still got the game versus Heritage to play. And that'll be for uh, second place. And yeah, second it place. makes a difference. All right, so back to me. One, one's feeding off my uh, – I did all my homework. I didn't get prepared. <laughs> That's not new. Uh, all right, so when did you start thinking, like, in high school, like, hey, I can, I can play college ball. Like, this is a possibility for me. Mm, like, the, my senior year. So not until your senior year. Yeah. Okay. And it wasn't because someone by the name of Todd reached out to you and said, hey, do you want to – It was. <laughs> it, it was not. You want to potentially look at going to so, Point University? <laughs> You know, I know the guy the, down there, the I can maybe help you out. Here's the thing, and you guys know this, right? I, I strongly feel that, that there's a lot of people out there that get overlooked in this community still to this yes. point. So, uh, so, yeah, so when you started looking at college, do you wish that's a process that you'd have started as a junior? Yes, way sooner. Okay. Yeah. What are some of the obstacles you found to, like, to like getting noticed? Well, it was, it was hard. Um, you have to keep reaching out. You can't give up. And you helped me a lot. Oh, well. Yeah, you helped me a lot. I do. Get I, I out actually, there, and I appreciate that. Well, it, uh, so I've talked to some college coaches, and, and, and we heard uh, Safe say it just a few weeks yeah. ago, right? It, it, there's so many players out there. You can't just, like, expect them to find you. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have to be proactive, right? And, and that's what you had to do. You had to be proactive and reach out to these coaches and stay on them about, hey, I'm available, I'm, you know, I'm worthy of investing in. Right? And is that something, so since you've already been through that process, obviously you're probably still associated and still talk to some of the girls that are at Southeast, right? Is that something that you're telling them already? Hey, look, if you want to go somewhere, you need to, do, you need to stay on, you need to reach out, or, 
or are you letting them figure it out on their own, or are you giving them the pointers because you've already been through the process? Yeah, I'm trying to help. One thing that does help is making a video. Yep. That's what I did and posted on field level, I think it's called, and it got me out there a little bit more. Ooh. What about the showcases? I mean, I'm oh, yeah, curious about, obviously you play club ball, like uh, with NSA Bells. Isn't there coaches out there going to the showcases as well, or are they not really reaching out, or how does that work? There's coaches out there, but you um, never know if you're going to get, you know. But at the end of the day, once you go to those, it's not about the coaches there. It's about how you play. Looking at the southeast side that's there, there now, like who's a player that you see in the current southeast team that you can see playing at the next level? Ashley Hurtado. Okay, Ashley Hurtado, yeah. And where does she play? What position? A defense. And what do you like about, about what she does? How she no, is strong with her body, mm -hmm. and she knows what she's going to do. Yeah, I mean, we've been watching her for a yeah. couple of years, yeah. and we've said the same thing. And, uh, and I know she's had picked up some injuries over the past couple of years, and, and I know you were injured toward the ends of last year. And like, I, we were like, well, when she's injured and you're injured, like, that's, that's <laughs> not good. So. so you transitioned from high school to Dalton State now. So what was the biggest difference from being like playing high school, playing club, and now playing at the NAI level in, you know, in college? It's just, um, for me, it's to play the game. It's faster? Yes. And you got to react fast, for sure. So really, you can't hold the ball too much. You got to be able to get it rid of it pretty quick? Yes. Do you still find yourself trying to hold on to the ball too much? Yeah. <laughs> What's the physicality level like compared to high school? Is it similar or is it is it more physical? It's more physical, okay. way more physical, yeah. Now you're you more sore after games and stuff. <laughs> you... Yeah, a little bit, not too much. And where, where are you playing? What position are these? The uh, center man. Where do you feel like in your heart of hearts? Do you see yourself as a as a nine, a false nine, or do you see yourself as a ten? Uh, he put. I like the ten spot a lot. Yeah. That's, that's kind of, I think we always saw you as a 10 yeah. as well. So. Yeah. And, uh, and last, we got about 40 seconds here, and this is a, kind of a, a big question. What do you think needs to happen locally to get the women's game to the level of the, of the men's game in terms of, like, advancing to, like, semifinals and finals on a regular basis? I think the girls just don't got to worry about what the guy's saying right now or how they're doing or whatever. Just play your own game and just put in the work to get there. That's basically it. And do you think, like, trying to challenge themselves at, a, at the highest possible level they can? Mm, yeah. And, like, I guess my other, my other question is, is like, um, do you think it? Do you see the game changing significantly in the next five years, or do you think it'll happen like sooner or later? Or, you know, do you see it being a big change in the next five years or less? Uh, probably less. Less. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, maybe a, a state champion in the next five years. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of girls playing club ball now. Yeah. But before we went over a little bit, so we're gonna if we're going over, we're gonna make sure we're I'm gonna go over <laughs> big. We're gonna go. We got one more question. <laughs> oh, this is important. One. Tacos or quesadillas? Tacos. What kind? Asada. There we go. And with that, we're going to go to commercial <laughs> break, and when we come back, uh, we're going to have uh, go over and talk about some games that happened this past week. We want to say thank you to Leslie Alanis. If you haven't seen her, go out to Dalton State uh, next fall here at uh, Roadrunner Stadium. My car looks totally ruined. I don't even know what to do. Locally owned Dalton Collision Center is the only choice when it comes to all of your auto body and refinish needs. Our experienced staff provides quality work from start to finish, will help with your claim, and even assist with getting your rental car. Everything from A to Z. So you can focus on life, we can focus on getting you there. We provide an excellent service for individuals who've had catastrophic injury cases. People who've had injuries that are gonna last them, unfortunately, for the rest of their life. Being there for a person 
being there to actually see them get better. That is what this field is all about. That's what we're really striving to do, and that's what we think we provide. You still have to have that empathy for the person so you can tell their story to the jury. At the end of the day, that's where your case is heard. This year, Coal Banker Kennard Realty is proudly commemorating our 50th anniversary and what a journey it has been. For five decades, Coal Banker Kennard Realty has been the heartbeat of real estate in Northwest Georgia. We've had the privilege of helping thousands of homeowners with their real estate transactions. Thank you, Dalton and Northwest Georgia. Whether you're buying, selling, or expanding your business, trust the experience that comes with 50 years of excellence. Coldwell Banker Kennard Realty with offices in Dalton, Calhoun, Cartersville, Ringgold, and Cleveland, Tennessee. Hey, welcome back to Monday Night Football. Uh, again, special thank you to Leslie Alanis, uh, Dalton State player and former Lady Rage football player, uh, for coming on here and sharing like her soccer story uh, from uh, a kid up through high school and now playing at the next level at Dalton State. You know, we love hearing those stories. We love hearing about players going on to play at the next level. Yeah, and I'm very impressed with Leslie. Uh, we've got a ch we've had a chance to talk to her and uh, interact with her in the last few years uh, while she was in high school, and you can show that she's uh, had some maturation. Her uh, public speaking skills have gotten on point. Uh, she's less nervous. I'm impressed. So. Hey, you know, but that's what we want for, for this entire community, right? We want to be able to showcase these players that, that you know, we meet and uh, we get introduced to through this process of covering uh, players and then going to the that's next level. That's why if you see us out at the games, say if what's you, up. Say what's up. Like, we don't. We know names, but we don't know. There's so many players just come up. Like, honestly, I'm probably more nervous of you than you are me, yeah. like. One of, the girl, one of the girls, like, she's like, I'm so nervous. I'm like, you're nervous. I'm nervous. I'm out here on the field. She goes, yeah, but y'all get paid. Oh, we don't. Oh, we get paid with that, donuts. That's, hey, but you know nothing. what? There's some high school rankings we want to get into. So let's roll up that little thing. Look, uh, no, these are region standings. We want, uh, it's okay. We'll bring them up in a second. But we only have uh, one girls team rank, which is Northwest. Northwest. Uh, had a, and which they had a, a good week. They yeah. had, a, and we'll go over that. They had a four zero win, and they they won the yep. region championship. They are not only region champions, but they are Soccer City Cup. So there they are. Got the the cup right there at the bottom. So congratulations. And they actually clinched that over Heritage, right? Yeah. The, hey, that was a revenge win right there, and you know that felt good because they were up at uh, Heritage last year. Uh, the field conditions were terrible, and they had to have that. That was a must win game for. Um, the region and uh, they lost that and to that we can we did get a, a interview with a senior uh, Lexi Lyons so we can roll that interview and see what she had to uh, say about the game Hey, this is Ty coming to you from Bruins Stadium here in Tunnel Hill uh, just after uh, Northwest Lady Bruins defeated uh, Heritage High School 4-0. Uh, and uh, I'm joined by Lexi Line. Lexi, you're a senior. Uh, last year, this game away for the same uh, for the region championship, you guys stumbled. Uh, this year, you were able to avenge that loss. How, do, how are you feeling after this win? Um, really good. I was super upset last year when we lost because we had won the last two years. And then my biggest goal was to win all four years. So it was more upsetting that we lost last year when we know we didn't have a good game and we were capable of winning. Well, now going out as a senior uh, region champion and Soccer City Cup champion, uh, and you're going to be continuing at Dalton State on a uh, scholarship for cross country. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Congratulations to that. Thank you. And uh, what does that mean to you to be able to go out region champion? So good. It was really nice because we have friends that also play, so it's good just to beat them and get revenge. <laughs> All right. Well, congratulations. Enjoy the win and the championship. Thank you. Hey, and thanks. Yeah, thanks again to Lexi Lyon for doing that interview, and thank you to the Northwest girls for, like, not encroaching, like, two feet from my back, making faces. Yeah, look at Lexi Lyon. I had deja vu looking at her. It took me back. Like, her, she looks like her mother, Katie, uh, her former Katie Taylor, now Katie Lyon, uh, former standout basketball player back at Northwest. Uh, I mean, she had hey, a little bit of her mom's look there. Hey, I'm telling you right now, if, if cross-country season and soccer season weren't the same, I can see her playing, being dual sports at Dalton yeah, State. Yeah, she's uh, going to Dalton State on a cross-country and track scholarship, not a Hey, safe. Y'all should try to make that happen. And so, be the first dual athlete out there. Yeah, and so, and to that night, you had uh, the Northwest boys playing uh, host to Heritage yep. in a big game. They went down one nothing in that game before storming back, winning 5-2. Uh, a good shift by uh, 
uh, Chris Tappy in that game, showing some leadership. And, uh, you know, you go down a game like that, you're expected to win, and the season's not going the way you want to. Easy chance to lay down, but showing. And they needed that because yeah. currently they're, that booted them up in third in the region standings. I mean, they're. Uh, they're going to be going on the road in the playoffs, but the most important thing right now is to make the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, because Cedartown and things like that, the two seed, uh, Southeast got the one seed. Um, they just got to keep their head up. The season's well, been a yo, it's been a roller coaster. It's been up and down. Do you want to go to those region standings? Yeah, we got. The, if we can go to the region standings really quick, we'll show, you know see uh, compiled these records earlier uh, today. I think. Yeah, Juan's been a, a stat compiling machine today. These are all compliments. So yeah, so Dawn Academy currently uh, the girls uh, they're zero and twelve. They're eighth in the region at zero and five. The boys are in with a twelve one record. Huge week for the boys. Five and zero in region currently first. They got five games remaining on the season. Three against. 4A competition. Two this week, Southeast and Tryon. The Tryon game is the biggest game. Throw the Southeast yep. game out. Locally, that's a that's a that's that's going to be awesome to yep. watch, but the Tryon game is the one they got. And then have. Christian Heritage, girls, they're at 3-6, and six, uh, but they're at 2-1 and one in the region, second. They only got two games remaining. Uh, the boys overall, 6-4, and 2-1 uh, and one in the region. They got one game remaining. Uh, so their season will be over. Murray County, girls, 6-7 and seven record, 3-4 and four region, third in the region. So they're still in the potential still to qualify. On. Five they, they're remaining. playing tonight, that makeup game yep. with uh, uh, versus North Murray. Uh, boys, you got a uh, 3-8-1 record, but 3-4 and four in the region. Puts them at fourth. They got four games remaining. North Murray, 3-5-1, and one, but they're fourth in the region at 3-5. and five. Uh, Boys are 4-7, uh, fifth in the region, so they're going to have a little bit of work to try to qualify for that fourth spot. Uh, and then we go on to the next slide. I think we have Creek. Boy, uh, girls are 8-4, 4-0 four, four oh in region first. The boys are 4-0 oh in the region. Play, playing Bremen right yeah. now for to determine the region champion. And then Northwest girls obviously clinched. Uh, they're 5-0 in oh the region, 10-2-1 and one overall, three games remaining. And then the boys are 5-6-3, and six and three, currently sitting in third with a 3-2. Well, they are in third because they finished this region 3-2. and two. Then you have uh, Southeast. Uh, girls 8-1, 3-1. and, one, three and one. Yeah, be, have to be here to keep that second spot. The boys are 7-4, reeling all seven wins. They're 4-0. They've already clinched region. Uh, they just have the Heritage game left. Dalton, girls, 6-4-2, and two, currently undefeated in region, four games remaining, two against Southeast. And then the boys are 10-3-1, and 3-1 one, and one in the region, four games remaining. That's going to be wild to watch yes. how that finishes. Way to get through that, one. I'm Thank impressed. You. And with that, we're going to go to commercial break, and we come back, we'll have more Monday Night Football. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? And what would it be like? Open up a world of possibilities when you sell your home and make those dreams real. At coldwellbanker.com, you can get an instant estimate on your home, compare cost of living city by city, and learn more about our revolutionary seller's assurance program. So it really is true. Your dreams don't have to be just dreams. At coldwellbanker.com. Who's up for some football? That's not football, this is football. And Andy, there's one thing that we all can agree on. That's it, North Georgia is the home for new and pre-owned vehicles. And don't forget accessories, parts, service, and collision needs. Claro que si sí se puede. Come see us. us. Hey, that's our part. Why should you choose OptiLink Internet? I chose OptiLink because of the great local service. We know computers and OptiLink knows internet with high speed symmetrical uploads and downloads. My customers depend on me for safety and security and I need fast and dependable internet. That's why I chose OptiLink. Some people say you can't have fast internet. I say, oh yes you can with OptiLink. Experience the difference. Call today, 706-529-1313. I'm Waylon. I live in Dalton and I'm the owner of Elite Lineman Training Institute. And I'm Mitch Sanford with Bitwell Bank. When I left Georgia Power to start my own business, I met with Mitch and told him what we were doing. I told Waylon, you're the kind of business we want to work with. We have a very high standard for how we work as a company and especially how we treat our clients. After a very candid conversation with Mitch, we knew we were on the same page. Today, we're working on several businesses, training and real estate. Because they do the heavy lifting, so I can focus on my business. My bank is built well. And welcome back to Monday Night Football, where golf is dope, uh, you know, but 
What is the deal with this hat? Man, I, I went to the Tour Championship in Atlanta uh, last year uh, at uh, East Lake. Oh, so, I, so it's kind of a brag hat. I mean, I liked it. It was the hat was like it was not traditional type of golf hat, you know. So. Yeah, I know. It's got that uh, I mean, white the, cord the, on the, it. The, the company device. that makes it is called Trap Golf, so it's just anti golf. But they make some good st- apparel, so I just had to like it. Wands but you know what? Right. Now we're going into the Wand Power Hour, my alma mater, Southeast. Yeah. Uh, they had a, you know, let's go ahead and pull it up. They won region. Let's just let's go straight in there. Hey, hey. Uh, look at that. Those boys, uh, they went down in, uh, to Central Carrollton, uh, closer than we expected. Right. A 1 0 win. Uh, but they came out champs, uh, they won that game. Uh, Hiro well, scored the goal. When it, but it's a total mind job, too, right, to see earlier in the week a, a team that you defeated beat the team 11-1. to 1. And so that's a mindset, yeah, right? And then – and not maybe realizing all the dynamics in play about why it was 11-1. to Yeah, one. so – because I my sister was there uh, at the game because uh, my niece plays for the girls. And I was, like, texting her how the game was going. She said 0-0. Zero, zero. I'm like, what? She said Northwest beat them 11-1. And she had spoken with a player's mom, and they'd uh, Central Carrollton had six players that were either suspended or injured that weren't able to play against Northwest. So that means they probably went deep, deep into their yeah, at eleven to one. I didn't. So now they get all these players come back. Uh, so I mean, you can't go off. And you said, and you said, no, you can't. You said they parked the bus. Parked as well. the bus. I mean, you got to do but, that. But hey, like, shout out to man. Props to Southeast. Start the season 0 and 4. Reeled off set what seven or eight wins. Seven in a row? should have been a couple games got rescheduled. I mean, uh, one game I don't think is going to get play. The team uh, down that Equity Christian School. I don't know. They didn't. And the Heritage play. game's been postponed. So, Heritage game was postponed twice. I mean, so they. Sh- but what I'm, character this team has showed to come back and now they're region champions and they're looking to finish out the rest of the year strong and go into the playoffs. Just really impressed with what Coach Garcia has done down there this year. Uh, so keep. I mean, on. And, and the way. You know what? They started out 0-4, like you said. Now they've rid off the wins. But also, tactically, he made changes. Mm-hmm. He moved Hiro from defense up to the top. He made some changes in the mid midfield. So they don't have a true out-and-out striker like they have in the past, but I think they're coming along. But this week will prove a point because, as we discussed, they a big game. I mean, I, I think it's a big game. Yeah. And people probably laugh, but they're playing Dalton Academy at – Dalton Academy. Hey, this was a great game last year. Last okay? year, Southeast won three two. Or, and now it's yeah. going to Academy this year. I think Wide this is going to be. I think this is going to be a great game. Uh, this game's going to be on Wednesday. So if you're skipping out on church that night, then you need to be at this game because I think it's going to be a great one. Does it have any implications of anything? No. no. But huge, like in terms of like local pride, like who's who's the big dog around here? Especially since we ain't got Dalton Academy in the Soccer City yeah. Cup yet. Hey, there's only one school not not in the playing them yet so uh, i think you guys can do the math on yeah that. and then talk about <laughs> soccer city cup boy standing let's go ahead and just pull yeah. that up really quick uh, i just as you can see there the chair um we don't want to look too forward but southeast got this, this is coming down to the last game southeast currently in first with six points two wins dalton sitting in second northwest is already out because they've already played their three games uh and kahala obviously uh no points on the board so this game is coming down to the last matchup of the season that will be played at Dalton High School, Harmon Field. It can't get any juicier than this. I mean, the way – Dalton obviously won the game earlier in the year. Uh, there's been – but obviously the team that played Southeast at the beginning of the season is totally different from what Dalton has now. And then obviously Southeast has made some adjustments. Both teams are completely different. Completely different. So – I think that game, I, I don't even want to see how it goes it's down. Too, too early. Too but early. Um, we already know Southeast with a tie, because that game can't end in a tie because it's not a region game. Either in a tie or a win, they take Soccer City. Yeah. Dalton has to chase the win. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting mental space to be that you don't see at this level very often, right? Normally at the professional level you see it, and, and maybe to some degree at the college level, but you hardly ever see it at this level. And, and that, that, this format for Soccer City Cup allows this to happen, so there's some interesting dynamics in play. And then we have the girls. The girls, El Clasico won this week. Is yes, happening. It, there are no Soccer City Cup implications for this one, so it will be the last game. Uh, but still, a tasty North little already took it, but it's obviously to see how you do there. Uh, but they will play this week. Uh, I think uh, Thursday it is. 
Yeah, it, and plus, it's just a huge motivation for both of these girls' squads, like continuing on with their region schedule, confidence, uh, and that sort of thing. Well, I, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to give the edge. To the Southeast girls have bounced back. They lost to Northwest. They bounced back with two wins, and they've gone out and just put out a barrage of goals. So mm-hmm. they've come out and played well. Um, but now they're going to play Dalton, and I don't know if that's going to be another mental mental block in their head. Dalton, the I mean, let's just just be real. Dalton's record, if you look at it, they're what I think six four and two. But the losses have been against Northwest uh, and like the Atlanta area schools. So their losses are not cupcakes. Right. And then their ties have been against Atlanta schools. Yeah. Park I, Central, uh, Alatoona. So it's. I, yeah, it's going to be well, a, little- it's a clash of one is is really battle tested in their losses, but the other one is high on confidence. Uh, I think it could come down to like tactically how these teams are set up. Uh, does Southeast finish those chances against Dalton that they didn't finish versus Northwest? Because we're telling a different story here if if they were to have done that. And there is also another component to the Southeast game, right? They also play Heritage this yes, week. This week. So a lot of things going on for the Southeast girls. Uh, the the bigger game is the Heritage game. The it big, just is. Yeah, it's region, so they need that. And uh, as uh, Marshawn Lynch said during the Super Bowl, got to have your mentals. So please, girls, get your mentals straight so you're able to focus. And hey, Marshawn Lynch, the mentals. You don't remember that? My mentals are straight. All right. Well, that we're going to go to commercial break, and we'll come back and we'll discuss TDA. We provide an excellent service for individuals who've had catastrophic injury cases. People who've had injuries that are going to last them, unfortunately, for the rest of their life. Being there for a person, being there to actually see them get better, that is what this field is all about. That's what we're really striving to do, and that's what we think we provide. You still have to have that empathy for the person so you can tell their story to the jury. At the end of the day, that's where your case is heard. Has a recent storm damaged the roof of your home? Altman Roofing has been restoring homes since 1984. In Dalton alone, over 2,000 roofs have been replaced by Altman. Altman Roofing will also work with your insurance claim. For a free 15-minute estimate for roofing, siding, or gutters, call 706-529-8136 or visit altmanroofing.com. You can also see their professional work on Facebook. Thank you. Thank you, North Georgia. Gracias, North Georgia. We appreciate you, North Georgia. I'm Seymour. I'm John Moore. Latin Georgia Bulldogs, we're number one. Thank you, North Georgia, for voting us number one six years in a row. If you're hurt and want the best, give us a call. We'll do the rest. Welcome back to Monday Night Football. Wasn't sure who was going to take that one there. Just he didn't have his mentals on. <laughs> My mentals were on low. I don't know what to tell you. He's got the bag of Skittles underneath his uh, desk over here. Yeah, so uh, coming back to this, we want to talk a little bit about TDA, about what a big week they have. Uh, but before that, let's go to the Optilink yeah, Sorry, board. Sorry, my mentals are still low. Let's go to the Optilink School Board. So here, we're not going to go over the scores, but you can see here, uh, we had quite a few gains. We went over them, but we just wanted to bring them up. The big uh, for me is the Dalton comeback win over Pebble Brook and uh, the common uh, opponent for Collar Creek and Bremen, which that game should be going on right now. We both beat Ringgold 3 nothing. Uh, if we go to the next slide, uh, just Northwest Baylor, which Baylor will play Dalton later in this be year. So. To see, be interesting to see how uh, that's that's a game that Dalton has owned over the last few years. Yep. Be interesting to see how that plays out this year. Look at then, that scoreline. Then on the girls' side, uh, big one here. I mean, obviously a respectable score. Dalton losing only two 0 to Lambert. Yeah, if that's, you haven't looked at Lambert, Lambert is ranked like top 
two or three in 7A or 6A, whatever classification, Southeast come back. You, you hate the team, you know, uh, telling coach like, hey, these are respectable score lines and these are uh, moral victories, but they are, and your team can use those later on. I mean, he, those girls are toughening yeah. up for sure. And I think we have another slider. Is that it, Clemencia? That's it. That's it. All right. Well, talking about, let's let's just go dive right in. Dawn Academy boys, twelve and one. And the one last is two. Cass and what Cass beat. beat? Dalton. So, so, full so, circle, so, so, so the full circle moment. It's like, this is one of those things like this person beat this person, this person beat that person. But I guess, I Boise guess, State's the national but I champion. guess Cass can say they are, you know, they're, they're the champions of the city of Dalton. They beat Dalton Academy and they beat Dalton High. I mean, this year, out there. Wow, that's that's actually a pretty big feather in the cap if you're Cass. I mean, yeah, so let's just, I mean, there's. Come so, up here and duke it out like, like for a full season. We'll but now they've got, you know, they got, uh, so Dalton Academy 12 and 1. They've still got region games against Armerchi and Kusa, which they've already played. Yeah. They just can't get too high. They do that. They run the table. One thing that I did look at this standings, Todd, that, uh, so Dalton Academy is currently ranked number two in Class 1. Mm-hmm. In Class A, Division 1. And who's number one? Atlanta International. Yeah. So no surprise there. That's a team that nope. just hangs out in the one or two position. Uh, in that classification. So you know that's that's where the championship's going to go through. Well, it depends what side of the brackets they are. So we are already looking down in the middle of April, uh, assuming Dalton, hopefully they're on one side of the bracket, Atlanta International's on the other side, and hopefully they're not on the same side and have to play in a quarterfinal, and hopefully this year they can play so, potentially. So who are you tipping the cap to on Wednesday night? Dalton Academy Southeast? Yes. Oh, uh, so... I mean, Southeast got a region game Tuesday, Heritage. Then they play. I mean, I, I think the boys are going to be juiced. My only thing is they're playing at TDA, Dalton Stadium. Mm-hmm. The fighting Ashers, they spread you out so much on that field. The baristas. The baristas, yes, that's right, the baristas. They spread you out. I think as long as the – I mean – is, you know, Southeast has the athletes, but I don't know if they're used to playing on the wide field. They're going to have to stretch it. I mean, we know what Dalton Academy is going to do. They're going to stretch it. TDA's back line has looked solid all year. I'll be interested to see what that looks like um, you know, versus, versus the athleticism and, and speed of, of Southeast. Um, sure, I'm not even going to attribute you know, that. You I, know, I, I, think, I think my biggest thing for Dalton Academy in that game is no matter the outcome, right, Draw, tie, win. You can't get so emotionally invested in the Southeast game, although you're going to want to because it's it's local, it's big, yep. you know each other. You can't get so emotionally invested in that that you don't perform against Trine later in the week for the region. Yeah, I mean, but I think it's a magic going to stone. Like, it, it's whoever, I don't, even though it's TDA, like, I, I'm looking at it now, like, if, Southeast loses, I think they're going to be morally down because, I mean, they're the bigger school. The bigger school, right. On paper, they should be able to win. But if TDA wins, then it's just going to be like, well, you know, we – I don't think they're going to be like, oh, well, we're happy. They're going to be happy, but it's like we expected to win because it's where they're playing. So it's going to be very interesting. If you don't know, they're going to be playing Wednesday. Georgia Tacos should be there. They're always at every Dalton Academy game. I like that. So I will definitely be there. I've already booked that game on my calendar this I mean, week. I'll be skipping trivia, so I won't be at Dalton Brew Company playing trivia that day. Uh, so. Let's talk a little Christian Heritage. Uh, they are about to go on their uh, two-week two, traditional week, break, yes. which we don't understand, but we just know that they don't have any games for two weeks. And when they come back, the boys have one game, and the girls only have two games left. Uh, Christian Heritage ranked number six uh, and one 2A? Class A uh, Class Division 2. Yes. So they're ranked number six uh, in, in the state, and I believe they're well, in second place. Well, in the second in the region, so they're going to qualify. Uh, we know traditionally last year those had pies in the first week. Mm-hmm. So, may, really, they didn't play to the second round. We'll see how that goes. And congrats to the girls last week for a big win over Bowden. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you just need to bang in a bunch of goals and enjoy the game. And well, that's and exactly and what was it, I can't recall if that was an away game. I mean, but just getting down to Bowden, there's no good way to get down to Bowden. <laughs> like, if I went to school at the University of West Georgia, like just getting to Carrollton is an hour and 45 minutes. But from Carrollton to Bowden is like another 20, 30 minutes. Past Carrollton. Might as well be another hour. It's like almost on the state line of Alabama. It's just like in the middle of nowhere. But uh, 
We were looking at the state rankings here, just to go down, girls, like Juan touched on earlier, the only uh, local girls team that's ranked in the top 10 is Northwest. They're number seven in 4A on the boys' side. Dalton coming at number three in 5A, Cahulla Creek. Uh, barely hanging on at number nine in 3A. Uh, I think that's a garbage ranking. Uh, Dalton Academy coming at number two in A Division One, and Christian Heritage number six, six in A Division Two. And with that Dalton ranking, they're number three in 5A. Just to put it in there. Calhoun is currently ranked in the top ten. Which they got to play, and or Cat, and then Cass is still in there. So, in that region, there's three teams ranked in the top ten. In the state. That that's stout this year. We're not used to seeing that. We're not used to seeing that level of competitiveness so, there. So we'll see how it plays out. With that, we're gonna go to commercial break, and we're gonna come back and discuss the upcoming games. My car looks totally ruined. I don't even know what to do. Locally owned Dalton Collision Center is the only choice when it comes to all of your auto body and refinish needs. Our experienced staff provides quality work from start to finish, will help with your claim, and even assist with getting your rental car. Everything from A to Z. So you can focus on life, we can focus on getting you there. We provide an excellent service for individuals who've had catastrophic injury cases. People who've had injuries that are gonna last them, unfortunately, for the rest of their life. Being there for a person, being there to actually see them get better, that is what this field is all about. That's what we're really striving to do, and that's what we think we provide. You still have to have that empathy for the person so you can tell their story to the jury. At the end of the day, that's where your case is heard. This year, Coal Banker Kennard Realty is proudly commemorating our 50th anniversary and what a journey it has been. For five decades, Coal Banker Kennard Realty has been the heartbeat of real estate in Northwest Georgia. We've had the privilege of helping thousands of homeowners with their real estate transactions. Thank you, Dalton and Northwest Georgia. Whether you're buying, selling, or expanding your business, trust the experience that comes with 50 years of excellence. Coal Banker Kennard Realty with offices in Dalton, Calhoun, Cartersville, Ringgold, and Cleveland, Tennessee. And welcome back to Monday Night Football, and uh, we're in our final segment. We're going to go right into the upcoming games because there are big games being played today. As you see here, Dalton Academy playing Tatuga, uh, Cahola, the Creek playing Bremen, which you said was a game that has to be replayed because of the power outage. And going on also tonight is North Murray versus Murray. The uh, that's the. Re, that's the replay of a game that they didn't have referees for a few weeks ago. So that's playing now. So from no referees to hurricane winds. So. And then we got Murray County, Gordon Central, Southeast at Dalton Academy. Uh, well, that's tomorrow. That's right. Not Wednesday. Tomorrow. Are you sure? I have to go look. I don't We'll, we'll figure it Nothing out. Nothing is changes more than a high school soccer schedule. Yes. Believe that. Uh, Dalton at Cartersville, uh, North Murray at Harrelson County, uh, Kahala at Daresville. Dalton at Chesapeake, that is played on Thursday when That's Dalton Girls is playing Southeast, which we'll see in a minute. Uh, North Murray versus Gordon Central, Dalton Academy versus Trine, region game. Uh, Murray County versus Model, which uh, Model is, yeah. I don't know if the girls or boys are ranked number one in their region. Probably the girls. So, They're yeah. stout. Uh, and then Northwest at Alatoona. All right. And then on to the girls, Dalton Academy versus Chattooga, Cahulla Creek at Bremen, uh, Northwest at Dade County. And then March 26, Murray County at Gordon Central, Cullet Creek at Adairsville, Dalton at Cartersville, North Murray at Harrelson so County, Northwest at Dade County. Circle the Dalton at Cartersville, as I mentioned earlier, that is region championship. Cartersville 4 0, Dalton 4 0. So that is March 26, that's that tomorrow night. That is tomorrow night. Winner of that game, region champion, number one seed. For Dalton, they're trying to go for a fourth straight region title, which hasn't happened. All right, and then on the 28th, Dalton uh, at Southeast. So uh, a little glimpse into what's to come at the last game of the season for Soccer City Cup. 
<clears throat> North Murray at Gordon Central on the 29th, Dalton Academy versus Tryon, Murray County versus Model, and Northwest at Alatoona, which that should be a really good game on the girls' side. Yeah. Uh, one of my former classmates, Aaron Denson, his daughter plays at Alatoona. Okay. Uh, Reese, so a little local tie-in there, but that should be a great yeah, game. Yeah, they do sponsor them. I saw that. You saw what? The Fort of Dalton sponsoring Alatoona soccer. Man, why you always got to bring uh, it up? I just brought it up. But you do bring it up. Fort of Dalton don't want to show, so we're fine. But big games there. What are you look? What are you looking at this week, Todd? What are the games that we're looking at? Oh, uh, I have to go back. Well, Dalton. I mean, Dalton's got a big week. They can clinch region, and then they got that little classical. T- TDA by hands down T- has T- the T- biggest T- week. It's Southeast. It's the boys. It's Southeast trying. They they got to take care of business there. Um, I have to get back over here and look at them all. What, what stands out for you? Well, those right there just mentioned, like, Southeast, can they come back? Either they're going to go down 0-2 or they're going to come up 2-0. Dalton having to see, can they clinch region and then not have a downer or Southeast. But with that, though, it's over. We're done. We're over time. I'm looking but you know notes because my mentals are low. Our mentals are low, but we'll see you, and we'll catch you next week. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? And what would it be like? Open up a world of possibilities when you sell your home and make those dreams real. At coldwellbanker.com, you can get an instant estimate on your home, compare cost of living city by city, and learn more about our revolutionary seller's assurance program. So it really is true. Your dreams don't have to be just dreams. At coldwellbanker.com. Who's up for some football? That's not football, this is football. And Andy, there's one thing that we all can agree on. That's it, North Georgia is the home for new and pre-owned vehicles. And don't forget accessories, parts, service, and collision needs. Claro que si se puede. Gracias. Hey, that's our part. Why should you choose OptiLink Internet? I chose OptiLink because of the great local service. We know computers and OptiLink knows internet with high speed symmetrical uploads and downloads. My customers depend on me for safety and security and I need fast and dependable internet. That's why I chose OptiLink. Some people say you can't have fast internet. I say, oh yes you can with OptiLink. Experience the difference. Call today, 706-529-1313. I'm Wayland. I live in Dalton, and I'm the owner of Elite Lineman Training Institute. And I'm Mitch Sanford with Bitwell Bank. When I left Georgia Power to start my own business, I met with Mitch and told him what we were doing. I told Wayland, you're the kind of business we want to work with. We have a very high standard for how we work as a company and especially how we treat our clients. After a very candid conversation with Mitch, we knew we were on the same page. Today, we're working on several businesses, training and real estate. Because they do the heavy lifting, so I can focus on my business, my bank is Bitwell. Bitwell.